What's going on peeps? It's Timmy Joe making videos about computer parts all up on the internet. And for you, I have a doozy here today. Brand new graphics card technology coming out of one of the biggest computer manufacturers you've ever seen, man. This is innovative stuff. They, they just found a whole new way of doing graphics cards. We got RTX cards, new Nvidia cards coming out in one of these new computers. And oh my god, it's just it's gonna blow your mind how they've fixed all the thermal solutions. I mean, this is crazy. And this isn't something you're just gonna go buy for your home computer, no. This is coming out of a, well, a Dell. Dude, you're getting a Dell. An Alienware. Dell Alienware made one of the weirdest, stupidest, weirdest, bad decisions I've ever even thought of. And I saw this article, and I thought, I gotta talk about that here. I got a little experience with Alienware's high-end graphics cards, and oh my god, this is not the solution at all. So yeah, this should, check this out. I mean, that's the solution you came up with to fix the thermal solutions in your graphics cards was to just make a brand new point of failure and make the world's tiniest little loop for a graphics card. It just makes no sense whatsoever. So this is Timmy Joe's opinion on the new Dell Alienware R11, Aurora R11's graphics card cooling solution and why it's one of the dumbest things I've ever seen a computer manufacturer do. It really is. So, uh, here, stay tuned. We're going to talk about it. He makes videos about computers on the internet. On the internet. Timmy Joe PC Tech. PC Tech. Tech reviews. Computer parts. You betcha. Woo! So... Why am I talking about Alienwares? Timmy Joe, you build computers. You know all the stuff. Why are you doing this? Well, yeah, I do build computers, but there is a segment of the whole population of computer enthusiasts that never want to pick up a screwdriver. They don't want to build their own computers and learn which chipsets go with which processors go with which, you know, CPU orientations and the motherboards and the click together. They don't want to learn any of that stuff. So they go to a manufacturer like Alienware or Lenovo with their uh, uh, Legion or, uh, you know, the HP Omen. They go to one of those, figure, these guys know how to build computers. I'm going to buy high end from them. And we all know that that's silly because you're buying in to what is probably inferior hardware, probably not the greatest hardware for your money, and you're getting like a pre-built box that's you know made to save money for that company while still on paper offering you certain specs. And Alienware is definitely part of this, although, you know, going back 10 years, Alienware I think was highly regarded as one of the better options, and I can uh, say that there's truth to that, but in recent memory, I would not recommend any Alienware's at all. So I guess we could start off with the fact that I know very well how bad Alienware's thermal solutions on their graphics cards for the high-end stuff has been because, well, about uh, six months ago, I bought the cheapest RTX 2080 Ti I could find in North America, which was an $1,100 Canadian, so like... 900 850 for a 2080 Ti, pretty good price uh, USD, and it came and it was this thing, which was out of a daily Alienware Aurora R8 or something like that, a 2080 Ti with a Founders Edition PCB, and uh, I was all excited about it, but of course I plugged it in, and after a half an hour, it shut off. And this was supposed to be a working example out of a you know computer. So I, being the smart person, messaged the guy, says the thing screwed up. He gave me a refund of $300. So I got this 2080 Ti for $800. I then fixed the cooler. It had not very great thermal paste on it, and I just put some washers behind the mounting you know uh, bracket or the mounting for the the die, and increased the mounting pressure. And it actually could survive with this crappy cooler. But why Nvidia even allows anyone? to put a blower on a 2080 Ti is beyond me. It makes it so you can have a really bad 2080 Ti that could ruin the reputation for the rest of the line for maybe not so smart people. So anyways, because they, they sell blower models of the 2080 Ti, they, they just do. Like a a Asus has some turbo version or whatever, I don't know, they, they have them. So when I saw this weird one, I'm like, what is that from? It actually said in the listing it was from an Alienware 
who knows? That's probably why the thing was being sold off was Dell wasn't willing to take it back, and they had you know the the the, the computer, so they just sold it off for parts or something like that. I don't know, but I end up putting a Zotac three fan heatsink on it that I got for eighty bucks. We end up getting a very good deal on a complete three fan huge heatsink version of the twenty eighty Ti, and I'm happy. But I'm sure there's a lot of Alienware guys out there that aren't because I've been hit up a lot from people who have bought these Alienwares due to that video. I think it has over a half a million views now. Uh, be, you know, the, the cheapest 2080 Ti because people have had issues with these things. So it's a well-known thing. And case in point, I had a, a client bring over an Alienware R4, which is this giant thing, like humongous, has fins. You turn it on, it comes alive. And then... This is computer. Sounds like a jet taking off. Makes all kinds of racket because it has some fairly high RPM fans in it and it's all like controlled, you know, for temperature and stuff. But when you turn it on, it makes a big racket just hearing all the fans ramp on and these fins come up. And it, because it's such a big PC, even though it's over engineered and has a lot of proprietary parts in it, it's not the worst. I'd imagine temperatures on it weren't too bad. Like I fixed it up and blew it out for the guy who replaced the thermal paste. He was happy. And actually, uh, this client, you know, he's like, I really like my Alienware R4. Uh, so much so that I recently went and bought a brand new configuration from Alienware, and it's too bad that you, I just met you, Timmy Joe. You could have built me a computer instead of me going with Alienware. But I've had pretty good experience in the past, and I was like, didn't want to tell him about this because he was getting a fairly high-end configuration. So you know, bad luck that he had just you know I just met him and he had already ordered this Alienware, and it was taking forever because of the coronavirus to get there. So he uh, messages me a few uh, weeks later. And he says, oh, by the way, FYI, my Alienware purchase on his R8 or R9, he didn't tell me which one it was, but one of the newer high-end Alienwares, 9700K in it, uh, 2080 Super, not having a good time with it. Uh, it went wonderfully horribly. I turned it on and quickly tested FPS in some games and found I only got 35 to 40 FPS at 4K, which a 2080 Super you're expecting a little too much out of it. Depends on what game you're playing, but it's not the best 4K card out there. Unfortunately, the 2080 Ti is the only one that can kind of claim that. But uh, maybe he's expecting a little too much, but you know, the uh, low end of parts that are in that Alienware aren't gonna perform as well as you know, if you went and bought a big overclocked version of the 2080 Super. So there's some things going on there. But uh, the worst part was after an hour of playing the newest Tomb Raider, it blue screened due to what I think was overheating. In the span of 12 hours, I had so many problems, I packaged up and submitted a return to Alienware. So a new Alienware. And you know what? This old one wasn't so bad, but Alienware hasn't really changed their tune at all since then, except for everything keeps getting smaller and smaller. So they take their really weird proprietary over-engineered computers and over the last like five, six years have been shrinking them down so that they're not this big giant thing anymore because that's not in it. But they haven't been changing like other computer manufacturers have. I mean, the way things have gone has been windowed side panels. You get, you know, uh, a lot of airflow thought and, uh, you know, hiding things, making things look really nice. Alienwares aren't like that at all. They're all over-engineered. The power supplies are like right beside the CPU. They use proprietary AIOs, proprietary power supplies, proprietary hard drive mounts. If anything goes wrong on these systems, you're gonna have a hell of a time replacing them with normal parts. Where I think uh, Le Legion, like, you know, the Lenovo's and the Omens have gone more towards the mainstream. So those are a little safer for, you know, if you have a power supply that goes bad, you could probably find a power supply that just fits right in there, you know, no problem. And it's not gonna take some Dremels and, you know, some soldering to get the thing working but when we're talking about the, the thermal solutions we know they're there he just had the same problem as i did the card probably is a blower model in that thing 2080 super and it shut itself off because the mounting pressure isn't good enough or the thermal paste wasn't applied properly or he just got a dud so alienware knows there's a problem and how do they fix it well they announce that thing i showed you that dual slots or dual card really AIO solution for high-end RTX cards. That is the stupidest way to fix the problem I've ever seen. There is a fan in front of that graphics card base, so I don't know why they don't 
commission one of the people that knows what they're doing, commission one of the you know, uh, graphics card cooling manufacturers, the one that made this thing, and say, hey, don't you have a real heat sink with some copper heat pipes that we could put on our graphics cards? Maybe two big fans, and we can engineer the card that would be still in one slot and have, uh, you know, if it breaks, it's not going to destroy the card cooling solution on it. Because imagine in five years when you're out of warranty on this Alienware R11, you've got some really high-end components in it. And all of a sudden that weird one-off AIO, weird double slot cooling solution, like what is this thing? I don't understand what they, they came up for this. What? Like, it's so weird. Imagine how little fluid is in that loop. Imagine how tiny the rad is. Like if you look at it, it's kind of like a blower card is a secondary card with a rad instead of a heat sink. And then you got two cooler lines going in here that are supplying very little coolant that could be in this little big of a loop. And you know, that goes you're, you're screwed. You're going to have to buy a new card. You're not buying a, one, a new one of those coolers. And it'll be right when, you know, uh, at the five year mark, when you're still getting pretty good, uh, you know, FPS with your 2080 Super or your 2080 Ti. But, you know, it's not worth replacing. But all of a sudden the cooler's gone on it and you have to replace it. And, or it died because, you know, you let it go too long at a high operating temperature or something like that. Case in point, I have a Fury X right here. I mean, it's been attempted before, and this is a proper AIO cooling solution. It has a giant rad that's actually leaking a little bit because I tried to refill it. Because the water permeated in this thing and uh, there was a severe lack of water. And now when you turn this thing on, the pump sounds absolutely garbage. It makes all kinds of crazy noises until somehow the pressure regulates and the water starts flowing in this thing. So I tried to fix it and I couldn't. And my only solution, there is no other heat sink for this, is to buy a, another broken card and hope that the cooler works and move it over. And I still have this AIO to deal with. So the fact that you made this double card solution, this weird two, two slot times two solution that, you know, what, what are you going to do to resell that? If let's say in five years you want to go and, you know, upgrade the card in this Alienware, I'm sure that the 10900K 10 core processor in it will still be half decent enough for games, but maybe it's a high end system. You want to replace it with the whatever comes out then, the 4080 Ti or whatever the hell it's going to be next. You're going to go to resell this 2080 Ti or 2080 Super that you have in here and it's got two weird slots and no one's gonna want to buy that from you I mean hell I'll buy one you know just to do a video on it because that would be fun back then but this is this such a stupid solution considering these things exist heat sink fans works there's a hundred 2080 Ti's 150 2080 Supers out there with a similar function to this that you could just put in your computer and not have to worry about it. But no, they over-engineered a solution just like they over-engineer all of their computers and I think it's going to be to their detriment. There's no way it's very cost-effective for them to keep working with this model. It doesn't make any sense. You re-engineered the entire wheel here of graphics card solutions and made a tiny AIO instead of just going with this blows my mind. I'm at Watch Timmy Joe Instagram and Twitter. This has been a rant on Alienwares and their new Aurora R11's graphics card cooling solution and why it's the dumbest thing I've ever seen. And uh, I cannot recommend buying any Alienwares. I mean, my client here returned it within 12 hours because it was shutting off because it was overheating. And then they go and make that the solution, adding another pump and reservoir and you know thing that can leak in your computer that's just stupid i'll see you guys in another video what's your experience with alienware huh i'd like to know do you have an alienware has it been working out well for you have you never had an issue or maybe you uh were all alienware until a few years ago when things started getting really bad maybe you've had like so many people that have messaged me or emailed me had an alienware card overheat and asked me for advice on it I don't know. Let me know in the comments below. I'm not watching Joe Instagram, Twitter. That's that was a rant uh, for 10 minutes, 14 minutes. Oh my god. See you guys in another video.
Jim and Dale.